I'll be covering the topic on eyelid and orbital biopsies in this course. I thank Dr. Manisha and AIOS for the opportunity. Before embarking on eyelid biopsies or surgery, it's very important to know the anatomy well. You should realize that just below the skin is the orbicularis muscle and the eyelid skin is very thin. At the same time, it's also very forgiving. And so it's better not to have a bad scar and we should know where exactly we have to make the incisions to get the right amount of tissue. The characteristics of lid malignancy are very many. There could be ulceration, lack of tenderness, induration, irregularity of the lesion and the lid margin, with loss of lid margin and palpable conjunctival architecture, dilated blood vessels that is telangiectasia, pearly borders as in basal cell carcinoma, etc. A careful evaluation of the palpable conjunctiva under a slit lamp, both with oblique torch and a slit lamp is very essential. We could pick up foreign bodies, allergic papillae, we could pick up scars of previous surgeries and in this patient who came with a presentation of ptosis and a little bit of conjunctivitis had a diffuse sebaceous gland carcinoma involving the upper lid on eversion. Calaisian, I generally like to be conservative and like to treat the cause, but in certain cases when there are multiple recurring and a bother to the patient, an upcoming function or wedding or change of job or to go, or to go out of the country, then so we would have to do an IND, but in elderly people, or even when the lesion looks suspicious, it's always good to take the contents of the IND for biopsy and also excise a thin lip of the wound which you make internally because here you know we don't suture and send that also for biopsy mainly to rule out a early sebaceous gland carcinoma so that we don't land up like in this case where he had four sebaceous gland uh, four Calaisian INDs and later landed up with this large lesion, inflamed lesion for the fifth time which was already involving half the orbit. He had to have an exenteration. This was about 15-20 years back and he was very unhappy after that. He had severe uncontrolled diabetes and finally succumbed to metastasis, uh, metastasis to the lung. So sometimes before the lesion can present itself to a substantial size, some amount of metastasis would have already occurred. Now this gentleman had an AML and this needed only an incisional biopsy followed by treatment for the leukemia. Here again this lady came for a ptosis correction but on eversion we found lymphoma there in the palpable conjunctiva which had to be excised and she underwent further chemotherapy. Excuse me. In certain lesions as warts, a snip biopsy would be sufficient. A gentle cautery at the base is very important. The lesion may look not look not so sinister, look very warty and dry, but the base can be very vascular. So we have to keep in mind about that. Intradermal nevus, junctional nevus at the lid margin, a shave biopsy would suffice. It's better not to remove the entire wedge excision and entire lid there and try to anastomose. But if you think that's going to leave behind a coloboma, which is significant and cosmetically it would be a blemish, then we would have to do wedge excision followed by anastomosis. In suspicious cases, the wedge excision can be done under frozen section control to see if the margins are free before you um, embark on uh, suturing that is reconstruction and this was a case of melanoma an extensive melanoma and a few years and he was kept under close observation and follow-up this was a tiny recurrence he developed for this I did a shave biopsy and this is how it was and uh, he also needed uh, topical mitomycin this was again about 14 15 years back and he did very well with topical uh, uh, treatment as well for the pigment dusting 
excision biopsy is needed in certain cases because simply if you just waste time in doing an incisional biopsy, if it's a very tiny lesion, then it may not be conclusive. So where you know for sure that the lesion has to go, especially if it is disturbing the patient cosmetically as well, it's better to remove the entire lesion. That is what we call as excision biopsy. Xanthelasma, again, more than chemical peels, I prefer to excise and carefully cauterize because these can be again very vascular and suture the wound. Wedge excision which reconstruction as I was talking about is for again suspicious lesions. You could do a frozen section in select cases and this turned out to be a basal cell carcinoma. Here again these lesions needed a wedge excision with reconstruction. Vascular lesions we have to be beware. They may not look so vascular when we see but as I told you even dry lesions and those which look very warty can be very vascular at the base and the vascular lesions per se can be even more vascular. You could try injection of tricot or sclerosing agents before you can and shrink the size of the lesion before you embark on excision because especially in young patients because they can lose a lot of skin tissue there. Uh, lid tissue there. So you have to be careful and you must be prepared for the bleeding and to manage the same. This was a case of amyloidosis. Here he needed a combination of excision, shave biopsy and um, uh, he also needed some cryo to the base of the lesion. Frozen section, as I mentioned earlier, is a very important aspect of managing eyelid malignancies. You have to mark, you have to give a 3 to 5 millimeter clearance all around. This was a basal cell carcinoma. And basal cell carcinoma, typically, they, we call them rodent ulcer because we know that they burrow deep inside. So they may look very small on the outside, but as we start excising, it goes in pretty deep. And here I marked all the sites carefully and sent it for the uh, frozen section where I was no told that the inferior margin was still involved. So a further excision of the lid inferior margin was also done before a, a reconstruction of this difficult case. This was a median forehead flap used for reconstruction. Sometimes superficial biopsy, as I said earlier, may not be enough. You may just get some amount of skin and inflamed tissue. You have to go deep in then. And this is very important when you are suspecting early sebaceous gland carcinomas especially. And this was another unfortunate case where elsewhere he had undergone a superficial biopsy. So though he was getting, and it was said there was no malignancy, then he was, there was such a massive lesion which had recurred. But since he was already diagnosed to have no malignancy, he slept over it. But by the time he came, this was a large extensive lesion again involving more than half the orbit. He refused excentration, so new adjuvant chemotherapy was given. But the cornea went for a toss because of so much of treatment and had to be carefully bandaged. And in between, he needed bouts of uh, bandage contact lens as well. A squamous cell carcinoma, again, we should, we should do a precise, complete cut. And this was again a re recurrence where it was extending a bit deep, but he didn't want uh, excentration. So in this case, brachytherapy was done. And uh, though it was not at all cosmetically accepted, this was, this was what the patient wanted. He didn't want excentration or removal of the eye. And uh, he, he did well, at least from the tumor part of it. Now, some patients can have multiple lesions in the skin, nasal area. You have to be very careful and carefully remove them. And for, this, uh, for the eyelid tumors, this is again a frozen section excision under frozen section control. And a Hughes, modified Hughes flap was done to reconstruct. Sometimes if the skin of the adjacent eyelid is not, uh, adjacent skin is not enough, you will have to do a full thickness skin graft. You can do one flap, you can do, you can take a flap, you can have a graft. You can't have two grafts one over the other and it's better to avoid that. So you should, you, you should either have a flap and a graft combination for reconstruction. Sometimes you have to aspirate the contents of the orbit, especially if it is pus or some other uh, suspicious tissue and send the contents for uh, histopathological and microbiological ev evaluation. So you usually take the biopsy in a syringe 
and this was an orbital biopsy of a lymphangioma. Again, it's, try, it's best to remove the complete lesion. If it's a large chocolate cyst, you can aspirate this contents and send it for cytospin analysis. And the tumor per se or the cyst wall can be separately excised and sent for histopathological e evaluation. In very large bulky tumors which cause mechanical obstruction to vision, it's good to debulk the lesion as much as possible. This was a high grade malignant lymphoma. So excision biopsy that is as much as possible debulking was also done. And then you after the confirmation of the diagnosis, staging is done with a PET scan for further treatment. These days we don't subject lymphoma patients to radiation, they do very well with chemotherapy. This is an orbital pleomorphic adenoma of the lacrimal gland which was completely excised in toto. And it's important to remove the capsule in lacrimal gland lesions. And in lacrimal gland lesions, it's also better to improve and um, remove the normal gland when you are a uh, little suspicious because you don't want to leave behind the gland. Recurrences can be malignant even if it's a pleomorphic adenoma and all the more if it is an adenoid cystic carcinoma. And very many a time, along with the biopsy, it's good to remove as much of the tumor as possible, debulk, because you can decrease the tumor load for further treatment. So the previous slide was a typical lateral orbitotomy uh, and for, uh, for uh, orbital malignancy. And this is how you like at the end of the day most of the cases to be this was a typical basal cell carcinoma, excision under frozen section with a full thickness skin graft, supraclavicular skin graft and he had very good cosmesis. So thank you very much. I hope I've just been able to give you a gist as to how we should be equipped in handling eyelid and orbital tumors for biopsy.